Coming up, we look at the EV charging network in Western Australia, fast charging and otherwise. Welcome back to Atto3 Adventures. Well, I'm based in Western Australia, so I thought I'd give everyone an update. If you happen to live in Western Australia or, you know, if you're in Australia and you're planning to come to Western Australia, maybe wondering whether you should bring an EV or not, well, here's a quick look at the network as, as it stands at the moment. So I'm recording this in February 24, and I'm pleased to say the network has really gone ballistic in the last year. There's been so many charging stations open up and it was one of the reasons why I actually bought an EV last year. It was one of the decisions which finally tipped me over into buying one. I haven't done an episode on that um, reasons why I went to an EV, but sneak preview, this is one of the reasons why the network is getting better and better. So let's have a let's start with looking at the fast charging network, the WA fast charging EV network and see how that's going. So I'm going to bring up a map. Now this is just a work in progress so just ignore any of the colors on the map and I will put also a link in the description where you can actually be taken to some of the websites which also give a bit more information about it so that will help those people who, who don't know much about it but we'll look at this in a bit more detail. So this is the southern part of Western Australia. So you can see there's quite a few there now if you look at the area going across the Nullarbor you'll see there's a few stations there now unfortunately none of those have been built yet so they're still going to be built in the next I've been told in the next three to four months but most of the other ones are now open um, the one in Kalgoorlie where I live is actually not open either um, but anyway that should be opening up soon and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute alright and then of course if we go to the north of Australia You'll see they're right along the coast and going right up to the Northern Territory border. There's also plenty of stations. Now again, some of these are open, some of them aren't. And that, later on I'll show you some apps where you'll be able to use them to determine whether they're open or not. So let's start with the WA EV network ones. Now these are the ones which are being funded by the government. So they've put in quite a few millions of dollars to put these in. There's going to be close to 100 charges all around the Western Australia, I think in about 50 different spots when it's completed. They're, you'll recognize them because they're blue and green and they're part of the Charge Fox network so that's one of the apps that you'll need later on. Now the one I'm showing you here is the one that's in Meriden which is in the wheat belt which I've used several times and I'm pleased to say it's a very reliable charger this one. It's never been down as far as I'm aware now each charger comes with two fast chargers and the, this, this footage you're looking at now, this is the AC charger, the slow one, which is, when, when I say slow, it's capped at seven kilowatts, which is sort of wall charger speeds. And this is what they look like up close. You can see here, it's got some information there about the charge fox and you've got three different ways of charging it basically. So you can just use the app, which is what I do. You can also use a credit card if you, don't want to use the app for some reason and you can also get like a little RFID chip which you can put in like a key ring or something like that so people who do a lot of traveling might want to use that but I've had no issues just using the app. Now I've been told the reason why you can just use a credit card I should point out is just in case the mobile network is down you should be able to still use the charger then so you won't have to rely on an app so yeah that's just some useful information to know. Now I've used three or four of these WA EV network chargers and I'll show you some footage of the ones I've used later on but my only complaint would be at, at this stage a lot of them have no shade and they don't have any rubbish bins, they don't have anything to clean your windscreen so they're a long way removed to what you expect when you go to a service station to just fill up with petrol so that would be something they could definitely improve on. Um, th that would be sort of like my biggest complaint. This one here in Meriden is not too bad because it's in a shady area but some of them you'll see later on are just very exposed. But look it's early days yet and I can imagine the very first petrol stations in the early 1900s they may not have had very many facilities as well. So you know for, for a network that's only been around for you know about a year or so it's, do it's doing okay. 
So this pole here you see at the charges, this is where you put your credit card information in if you want to pay with credit cards. And you can expect to pay currently 60 cents a kilowatt for fast charging and it's a bit cheaper to do the slow charging, about 35 cents. So to access the EV, WA EV network, you'll need to download the ChargeFox app which can easily be downloaded onto your phone. So just go to the appropriate store, download it, put it on your phone, enter your credit card details on there, which will be the payment option that will come out of an account. You'll come up with the maps, which will show you where all the spots are on the map. And of course, you can just direct your cart to go there using Google Maps or whatever your favorite service is. And now you'll see here on the map, some of them have the little lightning bolt icon there. And that means it's part of the WA EV network and you can access then the fast chargers, which is the 150 kilowatt fast chargers. The other dots are chargers which are part of the ChargeFox network, but not the WA EV network. So the charging speeds will vary on them. So they're usually not quite as fast, but it does depend. You need to actually check the particular station. So let's say you're interested in going to Meriden, this is what will come up. It'll tell you what's available there, how many ports are available, which are fast and which are slow. So you can see port A and B are available for the fast chargers and underneath that there's also a, a slow charger as well. So there you go, you can see here port A and B are the two CC2s which is basically the fast charging 150 kilowatts and it's showing that both are available. And then here at, also at the bottom you can see there's one type 2 available and that's usually the, the slow AC one and the two CC2s is the fast one. So yeah and then basically you can plug your car in and it will start charging at that station. Of, of course you, you're going to do all this while you're at the station, go to the app. And the app will keep all the information about your charge history as well. So it'll list where you've been, how much it costs, and you should get a little receipt posted to your email address too. So if you're using the car for work or whatever, you need to claim it, you'll have a copy of how much you've paid as well. Now the other charges which are um, I've used in Western Australia quite frequently, and also pleased to say I've never had an issue with them, are the amp charge ones. Now the amp charge are located at a few of the Ampol petrol stations. There's not as many as the WAEV network and they are slightly dearer as well. I think they're around 70 cents per kilowatt, maybe 69. But you can see here they're, you know, they're quite similar. They've got uh, the display there which shows you how everything is charging. They usually have one Chatamo and one CCS2. So if you have got like a Nissan Leaf or a Japanese car that uses the Chatamo plug, you know, they might be an option for you to charge. Whereas the, the you know, the, the Charge Fox mainly have the CCS2. So the Amp Charge is a very similar thing. You download the app onto your phone. You enter in all your credit card details so that it knows where to, to take the charge from. Um, there's little filters and stuff you can put in there. So, you know, you can, Put down that you want a Chatamo plug or a CCS2 plug. Once you find the station you want to, you just select whether it's the CC2 or the Chatamo plug and press start charging. And again, you've got a little history as well of, of where you've been and how much you've paid. And again, you've got a little map too. So you can see there's not as many, but these have all sprung up pretty much in the last year. So it was virtually non-existent just over a year ago. So you can see how quickly they're springing up and the, the orange ones there are new stations coming up. So again, they're slowly building the network up. So this is the one in Belmont. Now one of the great things about the amp charge ones is you're already at a service station. So, you know, you've got toilets there, you've got food if you want. Now moving on to some of the other charges which I've been to, this is the one in Southern Cross. Now, as you can see, there's absolutely no shade at this one. So it's fine at night time, but during the day, geez, we've got a hot day. And as I said, none of the normal facilities that you usually have, but it is well lit. Similarly, the one at Coolgardi here is also very well lit at night. Um, but, you know, during the day, as you can see here, not much shade. So, so yeah, it's a bit of a, a mixed bag at the moment, but like I said, it's still very early days and I'm just amazed, to be honest, how quickly they're, they're rolling them out. 
And then just finally, we'll have a look at the ones in Kalgoorlie, my hometown. So here's a couple of pictures here which I snapped just a few weeks ago. Not open yet. In fact, they've, they've sort of covered them all up with plastic at the moment. So it'll be a little while before they're open, um, but there will be another one open soon as part of the, the EV fast charging network. Now there is one final app which you should also definitely have and it would be familiar to a lot of people not just here in Australia but worldwide and that's the PlugShare app which lists pretty much anywhere that you can get power it can be like just from a sim simple household socket to a three phase or some sort of independent charger at a restaurant or something so they're not necessarily part of any network but you know that's a very useful app you can see here this is the Nullarbor region and although there's no WA EV network charges there as yet you can actually get power across the Nullarbor they're just all like sort of independent and other areas where you can get the power from that's also a very useful app because it it does tell you what's at it actually at the, st at the station or at the area where you can get power there's even like a score how reliable the power is People can list information, there can be photos there, all sorts of useful information. It's probably the most important app that you can have if you own an EV and you know you're looking for somewhere to charge. And finally, I just wanted to point out that Western Australia is investing millions and millions of dollars into renewables. They have been doing that for a few years now, and that we're slowly transitioning over to quite a huge percentage of our power will be renewable energy which i'm glad to say in fact meriden has wind and solar already supplying most of their electricity so you can see some of that in a previous episode of mine and that's really great that most of the ev networks are going to be from renewable power so it's just another way we're getting off fossil fuels so for those people who are trying to use that as an argument well it's just not the case and honestly even if the EVs were fully charged from coal-fired power stations it still would be better for the environment simply because EVs are so efficient with their power. Now there are a few remote service stations who are also going to be in the process of changing over to renewables. It's obviously going to be a, a much slower process for them but some really remote service stations spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on diesel generators and they've worked out that it's now becoming almost more cost effective to actually install things like wind, solar and batteries to actually supply their energy needs which means that even some of those remote areas you'll be able to get you'll be able to use I should say a fast charger which is going to also eventually be if not a hundred percent renewable mostly renewable energy and I'll just finish off by saying that 95% of the time you actually won't need a fast charger you'll just be charging at home and many people like me have a solar system which means charging is not only very very cheap but you can just do it as needed and you'll basically only need those fast chargers on long trips and you know of course if you if you can have solar it's a great way to not only feed energy into the grid so helping other people but um, you yourself won't have to pay as much for your own power because you can self-consume. So yeah, that's just uh, the, the reality of most people are going to charge at home. And fast charging is really just for people when they want to travel. Okay, so I hope that helps people out and who need to know a little bit more about the EV network in Western Australia and how it is if you do plan to travel over here and just for those people who don't have an EV I hope it also helps you gives you a little bit more information about the reality of owning an EV so yeah it's 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 definitely I can say it's definitely a lot cheaper for me and I've come to realize that there is a lot of misinformation out there and I've basically done all my own research and I've lived with an EV now for for a few months so it's good to to actually know what the true story is all right. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in today. I really appreciate that. Um, as usual, we've got great content coming up. So stick around. And if you are interested and you haven't already subscribed, we'd love if you do that. All right. As usual, take care out there on the roads. Be safe and we'll catch up with you soon. Bye for now.